Hi everyone, welcome to Understand Heart, where we learn about anything and everything heart related. This is a video which will form part of a series where I share some of my experience on how I manage common cardiological presentations. This series is aimed towards junior doctors to help them transition from the more comprehensive medical school assessment to a more targeted assessment of specific diseases. In the spirit of World Heart Rhythm Week, we will be talking about the management of AF. As a structure to part of this series, I will be dividing the assessments to approach, history and examination, management and learning. These are the timestamps of the topics I'm covering, so let's get started. On approaching the patient, the first step would be to check hemodynamic instability. Most presentations within cardiology has the potential to cause instability and AF is definitely one of them. When you get asked to review a patient with AF, first assess hemodynamics using the ABCDE approach. If the patient is unstable, with signs of shock, i.e. hypotension at systolic blood pressure of less than 90, pallor, sweating, cold, clammy extremities, confusion, or impaired consciousness, syncope, heart failure or myocardial infarction, then perform steps to stabilize the patient and obtain senior help early. Once the patient is stable, confirm the diagnosis with an ECG or if ECG is available, look at the ECG for signs of ischemia. AF is defined on the ECG as loss of the normal P wave with irregularly irregular QRS complexes. The rate is commonly quite fast at more than 100 beats per minute. Now on to history. There are a few important aspects of the history relevant to AF. Firstly, check the time of onset of AF or symptoms. This is important as knowing the symptom onset time can help determine the management strategy i.e. is it safe to shock the patient as the ESC guidelines recommend onset of less than 48 hours to be safe for DC cardioversion. Discussing associated symptoms can sometimes help identify triggers. Common triggers are infections such as pneumonia or a UTI, hyperthyroidism or electrolyte imbalance. The history can provide clues to these triggers and blood tests can be done to confirm. Lastly, Confirming the medical history will help identify risk factors which can be addressed during the management. The medical history will also let you calculate the charts to VAR score to determine if anticoagulation is indicated. Targeted examination to look for associated disease like valvular heart disease or for triggers like cellulitis or pneumonia would complete the history and examination section. When it comes to the management of AF, stroke prevention plays a huge role and this is mostly guided by risk scores. The charts to VAR score is a useful clinical score to guide the decision of anticoagulation. A score of more than or equals to 2 indicates requirement for anticoagulation, a score of 1 means to consider, whilst a score of 0 means there is no indications for anticoagulation. The has fled score is used to determine the risk of bleeding and identify factors which we can modify to reduce the risk. Generally, unless the has fled score is high and we are unable to alter it, anticoagulation takes precedence. Once the management steps has been planned, it is vital to explain it all to the patient. Always remember, management of AF involves three areas. Treating AF, which means rate versus rhythm control strategy, anticoagulation based upon the charts to VASC and Hasblet score, and management of associated conditions such as hypertension and diabetes. One of the tips that I normally do is I encourage my junior colleagues to present their management plan to the patients under supervision, as this is a good test of knowledge, organization of thought, and communication skills and it will help bolster confidence for the next management plan. Lastly, once the management is completed and treatment has been started, 
once you consolidate the learning. Please discuss the case and ask for help at any point with senior doctors. However, you should try to do as much as you can before getting to this stage whilst ensuring that the patient is safely managed. Try to follow and learn from your senior registrars or consultants on ward rounds or post-take ward rounds. Learn what they do, how they approach the discussion and ask when you don't understand. Much of the learning is done at the bedside and you remember best when you can link a memorable case to the disease. If possible, reflect your learning and document on the e-portfolio as this is a very important part of the training process to allow you to achieve a favourable outcome for your ARCP. If you find this video useful, please like and share. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you learned something from the video and would like to support my work. Enable notifications if you want to be informed when I post my next video. Please comment below if there are any topics that you would like me to cover and I will try my best to do it. If you would like to get in touch, please email me or DM me on my social media platform. Thank you for watching.